점수 잡는 hackers. Hello everyone, welcome to Hackers SAT Math. Today we'll be going over practice test for the test itself entirely, starting with the no calculator section. As usual, I hope you guys are all ready, right? Let's begin right away. So for question number one, it was a nice and easy warm-up question where they present a simple algebraic expression and the condition given was A is equal to 4. And they're asking for the value of B. What do we do here? All we have to do is substitute and simplify. Should we do it together? Very good. So let's just plug it in here. So it becomes an 8 plus 5 negative B is equal to everything as itself on the right hand side. So you group the variables together on one side. So let's just move it to the left side because I think the positive version is the more convenient form. So 2B is 17 negative. Overall, let's just write a 13 here. And I can validly conclude that my 2B would equal to a value of 4. Therefore, B would be C, right? Very good. So number one wasn't that bad, and let's move on to the second question right away. Number two, they're presenting a graph, and when we first encounter graphs, you must always read the title and the respective axes. So they're actually presenting data regarding packages prepared over time, so we can anticipate that the x-axis would be time, and the units given are in terms of very good hours, and y-axis is number of packages as itself and we can see that there's an overall positive linear trend. As time progresses, the number of packages sold will also increase as well. And what are they asking for? Uh, this is the background information, and the question begins at the final sentence. Which one of the following best describes the relationship between P and H? So we just simply need to model the trend into an algebraic expression. So let's just go back real quick. We can see that, for instance, should we take these two points as a reference? We have the origin, 0, 0, 0. Let's just write it here. And the second point refers to a point of 2, 100. And can you guys tell me what the slope is? Change of y over change of x, therefore 50. And it does begin at the origin, therefore b is the only correct form. a and c are both going to look something in a gradual form, right? The slope is a lot greater than the two numbers given. Very good. So as long as you don't make a mistake, the first few questions won't be too bad. So let's move on to number three. Okay. So we have an exponential form, everything being equal to a simple integer of 16, and they're asking for the v expression in terms of w. So once again, we just need to simplify this. What happens if we multiply the two forms on the left side? We can group the exponents. Do we multiply them or do we add them? Good. We add them and it becomes a v plus w, and everything raised to the fourth power. That's how we can simplify 16. That's why our v is going to be equivalent to a 4 negative w. And I think we do have an answer. Your circle B, and that's it. Good. So let's move on to number four here. And they're presenting a trapezoid, and it's a basic description of the diagram they're providing. The area is 24, and they're asking for the x variable. And we can see that the x is located on the left side as a partial length of the base. So as a reference on the side, let's just do this together. What happens if I provide a length of b1, b2, and a height of h? Can you tell me the equation for finding the area of a trapezoid? It's going to be 1 half, good, and the sum of the two lengths, and you multiply by height. Very good. So let's look at the figure once again. We can see that the overall height is equivalent to a value of 3. And the entire base length, for instance, let's just use a variable and call it y. So we can actually plug everything into our original equation. The base length of y and the upper length of 5, the sum of it, and you multiply the height value, overall it should produce a final result of the area that they give as the figure 24. And I think when we simplify it, let's just move the values on the right hand side. If I cross these two out, it's going to become a multiplied form of the reciprocal, two thirds. That's why the sum of y and 5 is going to be equivalent to 16, and therefore I can conclude that y, the overall length, has a value of 11. But how do you finish this question up? We can see that the top 
partial length has a value of 5. So everything up to this partial length is going to be 5 and the remaining portion, whatever we have left, the x and the partial length of 2x, the sum must be equivalent to the remaining length of 6, right? Good. That's why we can actually finish this question up and find the value of x and then you circle it to be c and you're done. Okay, very good. As a quick recap, let me ask you a quick question. This diagram was a trapezoid, but how do you find the area of a parallelogram? For instance, if I had a base length of b and a height of h, the area would be the simple product of good b and h. You don't incorporate the one half value, right? If you move this partial triangle, it becomes a rectangle. Good. So moving on to the next question of number five, let's do it together. We can see that a equation is presented and the description is just going to refer to the equation that they provide, the basic setup as to what it means in the physical aspect. But in the final part, you don't even need to read it. If you go through the answer choices, they're simply rearranging the equation in terms of A. We've encountered this question type numerous times. So what do you have to do? Just apply the step-by-step -step process and leave A, whatever involves A, as it is, and let's just move everything on one side. In this case, I think moving it to the left-hand side would be a simpler form. And how do you get rid of the one-half here? You multiply two, both sides, and you divide it by t squared, and we're done with our final conclusion. So do we have an answer choice that matches this exactly? I think we do. You circle A, and that's it, okay? So moving on to number six, we have a systems of linear equations. These question types pop up almost in every single test. So once again, we have two equations and they're telling us that the ordered pair is a solution for the two equations above and they're asking for the ratio of x and y. So once again, how do you go about solving this question? You just simply find the point of interception between the two points. So what I first did was, since the first equation has y as the first term, I just rewrote the equation, negative x plus 3y being equal to 2, and a simple 2x, 6y being equal to 0, and from this point on, what should we do here to find the point of intersection? Well, why don't we just multiply 2 for the first equation, so you get a negative 2x and then a positive 6y being positive 4. And we can validly actually eliminate the x value. So 12y is equal to 4. That's why I come up with my conclusion for y and we can use this information to find the value of x in this particular case. So you plug it into any equation you like. Should we use the first equation? 3 times y, negative x being equal to 2, that's why x has a final value of negative 1, and when we're looking for the ratio between the two, it's going to be a x over y, substituted in negative 1 over 1 third, and I think we're done. So you circle b, and that's it. 